All right, first things first, you need letter bomb. Make sure you select the right region, put your MAC address in, download the thing. This is a tutorial for that right here. That'll be in the description. And uh, that all goes on a SD card formatted. Uh, it's the opposite of the USB drive. All right, the SD card is formatted to NTFS. NTFS. RV loader, you get here. Unzip it, throw it on there. Don't make a new folder and then put everything in that folder, just the drive itself. Here's all your files that you downloaded from RV loader, plus some others. We'll get to those in a moment. It's called the root directory, by the way. When nothing's inside of a folder, that's the root directory. It looks like some of the files that RV loader might complain about being missing. Looks like you might be able to find all of them at this link. I found a couple others before I even got here. The only one I used was this ISO iOS 8064v6944. I got my first one from this link. Just this is directly what showed up in the Google search results, just this direct link. The second one I found from here. Download this Gcon Wii, unzip it, grab the WAD file, throw it on the USB drive, discard everything else. Nothing else that's downloaded through this matters. And when that, uh, once you have that all right, it installs. It'll ask you if you want VGA. Of course, you tell it yes, and then go through the install process. Uh, I'd recommend doing all this with composite, by the way, because component won't work after it switches to VGA. Right here are some mode pins and a component cable. These two get shorted. And it's like, oh, let's switch from composite to component. This mod makes it switch from composite to VGA. VGA needs a couple signals that aren't typically brought out to the AV cable, H-Sync and V-Sync. If you have an earlier revision of the board, make sure you don't do what I did. I looked at, here's the chip, here's the standoff. Like, okay, let's go right here. No, on mine, the chip is rotated 90 degrees, so the pins that I wanted are over here. The pins that are here on mine are ground. So I had to fight with that for a bit before it worked. H-Sync is a higher frequency signal. So I just, I ripped Wi-Fi out of mine and had RV loader do the no Wi-Fi patch. I don't know what happens if you remove Wi-Fi on a stock. I don't know if it just like stops it from booting or what, but I took one of the Wi-Fi cables, left the shielding on, connected that to H-Sync. Again, the center to H-Sync. And then to the left audio out. And then I took the shielding on this end and solder it to ground. The shielding over here, just nothing. Make sure it doesn't short anything. Trim it away, insulate, whatever you gotta do. Don't let it short, short shit out. And then V-Sync, since it's a much slower frequency signal, I wasn't worried about noise, and I just went straight from this chip up to the right out. Oh, and if it's not obvious, you cut these traces before you try to do that, because probably wouldn't break anything, but it might break things. Best case scenario just wouldn't work, so cut these traces, solder those wires. And I found room between the controller ports and the memory card ports to just put a couple RCA jacks. And then I connected ground to this tab here. And then use the this side of these capacitors and just ran those out. The only thing that bypasses is these resistors here, which are current limiting, which aren't strictly necessary, but it's more of a protection in case you get a cable that's busted 
or you plug it into a receiver that's broken in a way that where it tries to draw too much current, then you don't have a problem there. That's my understanding of this. I'm pretty sure these capacitors here would do a lot to limit them because they're in line. What you would call a uh, AC coupling capacitors, if I remember right. The way that's routed. So I wouldn't go straight to this chip here. Go on the other side of these. Or on the other side of these resistors here. That would be the most appropriate way to do it since you're not basically bypassing anything. It's just these are really tiny and these are just small so they're much easier to solder to. Oh and if you don't pull the optical drive out like I did it's going to be a lot harder to find space to add your audio jack. Alternatively you could also uh, if you can find, I hear the Weed HDMI adapter has all of the pins, even the ones that aren't used. So then you could just repurpose some of these other pins that, like this data, these data lines here, from what I understand, those aren't used for anything. There's more information in this form here about what to remove to completely disconnect those. So these pins are just open to use for whatever. And then you could just leave the audio intact. But then you'd have to also add audio in with your VGA. The, you got options. Just understand what you're doing. Figure out the way you want to do it. Do it. Then, either get yourself a component cable and ready to get these for like seven bucks, or you get something like the Weed HDMI and get that for like five bucks. It's just a component to HDMI adapter. The way I did it was I took my component cable pop the end open, desoldered the wires, and this right here is just a VGA cable. Soldered the wires where they needed to go, put a zip tie here. There's tape on there too because there's some extra wires. Just fold them back, tape them over, put that zip tie on there so that the cable can't be pulled out and rip the wires out, you know, rip the pins out. And then also put a zip tie on this side. You can't really see it, but it's there. So that when I go to plug it in, I'm not mashing the wires in and then repetitive plugging and unplugging. I don't want the wires to break. You could also like, I don't know, have a hole here and then once you got it assembled and working, just put a whole bunch of hot glue in there. Keep in mind that the colors shown for these pins don't represent the VGA RGB. These represent what they are for a component. So, 7, right here, is red. 9, green. 11, blue. If you have them mixed up, it'll work. Your colors will just be horribly off. And I decided I didn't want to bother putting the optical drive back in, so I needed a way to put my games on USB. And I do believe for the games to run at 480p over VGA you can't use the stock home screen so you basically have to use USB to load your games don't quote me on that it's how I did it and that's how it works so if you're having trouble and you're not doing it that way do it that way I would have preferred putting them on the SD card but apparently that doesn't quite work yet or people haven't figured it out or I just don't know the right software we backup manager when your game is over four gigs apparently you can't just throw it on the USB drive and expect it to work this breaks it up in a way that their each file is smaller than four gigs and then throws a little disk info thing that the homebrew shit looks at to boot the game properly the game the Wii games go here WBFS and here's that disk info that tells the homebrew stuff what to do with it and here's it broken up into multiple chunks Right here is a tutorial of how to use Homebrew Manager, the one that I followed. And uh, if you're going to be lazy like I did and not even try to put your optical drive back in because you broke one of the ZIF connectors, uh, you're going to need a place to download the games that you own. Okay? That you own. It's, uh, that should be it. 
letter bomb, RV loader, your various wads, add the two extra wires after cutting the traces that you're going to replace. Alternatively, there are some other pins. This this will all be in description. Find a cable or adapter, whatever, to hack up. A lot of composite cables don't have the extra pins, so just, just get a component cable or something that's essentially a component to whatever. Make your cable. And at that point, you should be able to plug it into a monitor and it work. And then play your games however you're going to play them. And there you go. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 